What up, peeps? Tony Baker here, back with another, oh, this is a list. This is a list. I'm gonna start doing more lists because everybody loves a good list. I know I do. I'm gonna start doing more lists out here. But this time I'm doing my 25 favorite hip hop albums. No mixtapes will be included here. My 25 favorite hip hop albums. Now, this is not a list for the best, you know, hip hop albums of all time, just based on this, this, that, and the third. This is just my personal favorite 25. It was tough. And this list can change depending on the day. But when I wrote this, this these are the 25 that I came up with. This is in no order. This is not in order. I'm gonna give you my list, okay? And it was controversial because my list does not include a Tupac album. That's right. This list does not have a Tupac album on it. And people, oh man, they were in their feelings in the comments section about this. And y'all probably will too. Man, it ain't no list if you ain't got Tupac on it. If you ain't got no Tupac album, it ain't no Shut up. I love Tupac, but I'm more of a playlist Tupac guy. I, I, take, I take hits from various Tupac albums and then make it into my own list. But an actual album, Me Against the World is my favorite Tupac album, but it's not making this list. Y'all just gonna have to deal with it, all right? Here we go. Black on Both Sides by Most Def. Now, when I bought this album at the end of, uh, I think I got this album in 99 when it came out, I could not stop listening to it. I was like, yo, it's a long album, it's a long play album, but damn near every track is dope as hell. I was like, yo, I was completely blown away. I like the Black Star album a lot, but this one to me hit me harder. I could not stop listening to the album. Ruckus Records were doing that thing. They had the Feral Munch Internal Affairs album and Reflection Eternal Train of Thought album. Ruckus Records and the Sound Bomber joints, they were killing it this time. And Black on Both Sides had me all up in the mix. Shout out to Most Def. Only Built for Cuban Links by Ray Kwan. This album, nothing sounded like this album. I was just like, yo, this is crazy. I'm a Wu Tang fanatic. I was like, yo, and Wu-Tang is going to show up again on this list, of course, because, you know, that's what it is. And I love, you know, Raekwon. He was a standout on the initial Wu-Tang album. I was like, yo, Raekwon is dope. He was on Cream. He was killing it on there. Had a dope voice. His name was fresh. Matter of fact, that's one of my son's middle names, Raekwon. Serene Anthony Raekwon, man. Listen, that's, that's how deep the love goes. Only built for Cuban links blew me away. Incarcerated Scarfaces is a song I quote to this day all the time. And verbal intercourse, Nas verse on verbal intercourse, and then ice cream? Oh man, come on, don't get me started on this album, man. Only built for Cuban links. Mob Deep, The Infamous. This is one of my favorite albums of all time. This is easily in my top five of all time. I love The Infamous album on Mob Deep. I bought this album the last day of school my senior year in high school. I went out and bought the tape that day. I remember because when I bought the tape, we were listening to it in the car. I was in the back seat of my friend's car, and I remember this vividly. We were listening to the tape, and I was like, yo, this is fire. I was in the back like, this is a good purchase. Because I bought it on the strength of The Shook Ones Part Two, one of the best songs ever made. And I remember it was raining that day, and a car passed, kicked up all this water, and all the water hit me in the back seat. I was like, cause I was looking out the window, it was a two door car, I was like, yeah! And the water just came in, splash. I got a nice dose of dirty street water while I'm listening to this gritty masterpiece from Mob Deep, man. The infamous is on my list for show. J. Cole, 2014 Forest Hills Drive. One of the newer uh, albums to make my list. J. Cole's 2014, even though I love Friday Night Lights, it's a mixtape. So 2014 Forest Hills Drive, I feel like J. Cole got it right on all fronts. Every song was hidden. Um, his melodies, his flow, the structure of the album. The album felt very personal and real. The album cover, he just snuck it out on us and it was, it, it was just perfect. I feel like this is his magnum opus so far. Even though Friday Night Lights is incredible, uh, you know, but it's a mixtape, you know, but, but 2014 Four Seals Drive, that's what boosted J. Cole to another level in his career in popularity and in music. So 
That's definitely on here, man. I couldn't stop listening to it. That's the that's the common thread with these albums. I couldn't stop playing. I was like, oh, I can't stop. I can't wait to get in the car and listen to them again. Same thing with Good Kid, Mad City, Kendrick Lamar. This is his of first official official album. You know, this was the one we were waiting on. Even though Section 80 is is technically an album, there was still talks that it technically wasn't a real album, even though it is. It was just weird. But this one was the official debut. This is still on Billboard charts now. This album was incredible. It had it all. The aggressive tracks, the thought-provoking, the storytelling, the way he constructed the, the entire track list together to tell a narrative throughout. Incredible. Like, you can tell Kendrick Lamar really just takes his time with his projects and sets them up in a way where it's just not just random music and random rapping. Beautiful album, man. Definitely on my list. Uh, B by Common. Common is one of my favorite MCs. Um... He put out an album, most of it was produced by Kanye West. And the only two tracks that weren't were produced by Jay Dilla. You can't lose with that formula right there. And this is Kanye West when Kanye West was killing. This was killer Kanye West. You know what I'm saying? This was dope, digging in the crates, soulful production, Kanye West vibes right here. It's a short album, but it's short, compact, and damn it packs a punch, man. I love this album. I couldn't stop listening to it. I couldn't wait till it came out. I got a bootleg copy just to tie me over to the real one came out. I used to call 106 in Park and request the corner. That's how invested I was in this album right here. And I love the fact that Common and uh, Kanye West were on the Chappelle show doing a song from this album. Great album. Catalactica by Big Crit. This is an album I couldn't stop listening to. I played it. It's a long album, but every track is damn near killer. I could not stop playing. I listen to the song Catalactica every day for a good year. Uh, Big Crit is one of my favorite artists right now, and this album was a masterpiece. Definitely on my list and one of the newer albums on the list as well. Outcast Equimini. It's their third album. I love this album. It reminds me of college and road trips. I used to take road trips all the time in New Mexico. Five-hour road trip from Las Cruces to Clovis, New Mexico. We need that good music. And the Quim and I, you can just put it on and let it play. And they just got some songs on here that just damn near all instrumental. The artist storytelling is one of the best songs ever created. And the song of Quim and I is amazing. Outcast is the best duo of all time, in my opinion. And the Quim and I is a masterpiece. Do you want more about The Roots? This was the debut album for The Roots, if you don't count Organics, that they released after this, but it was older than that. Anyway, Do You Want More was my debut with The Roots. Um, Distortion of Static was my debut song. I was like, yo, these cats is rapping. Proceed, Silent Treatment, I was like, yo, these dudes are dope. And they were playing live instruments. I was like, yo, my head blew off. My head blew off. They were a real band, but it was hip hop. My head exploded. I couldn't get enough. I was like, yo, this sounds like nothing else out there right now. And I could not stop listening to it. And they are still one of my favorite bands of all time. College Dropout by Kanye West. This is Kanye West's debut album. When it hit the streets, I could not stop listening to it. I was working at Best Buy at the time. I'd go to work. I'd be just thinking about the album. When I get off work, I'm getting in the car and I'm playing it again. The soul samples, the raps, the features, everything was perfect on this album. Now, mind you, I skipped uh, that little workout song on there. Uh, that's the only one I really skipped because it felt like a parody song more than anything. So that's funny, but look out. But other than that, Album is just perfection. Kanye West in his prime right out the gate. Reasonable Doubt by Jay-Z. Jay-Z's first album is still my favorite Jay-Z album. It came out of nowhere. I didn't see it coming. I bought the album on the strength of the Dead President song, and I was like, yo, this album is really good. I couldn't stop listening to it. I was like, yo. I think I had bought like a couple albums that same day, but this one, I could not stop. The song he had with Biggie, I was like, yo, it's Biggie and Jay-Z. And this is not, this is not the Jay-Z you know today. This is, Jay-Z was just a new cat that could rap. I was like, I like this new cat that could rap. I didn't know who he was as a person. I didn't need to know. I just knew he could rap, and the beats was cold as ice. Could not stop listening to it. Classic. 
It was written by Nas, Nas' second album. I was like, yo, this is the album that really sold. Illmatic gets all the critical praise in the world, one of the most critically acclaimed albums of all time in hip hop. But the second album, it was written double platinum. It stayed number one for four weeks, but the album was a, it was a departure in sound from Illmatic, but it was dope. It was more glossy, it was more polished, it was more accessible. And it was dope to me. It was written. A lot of people say it was written was better than Illmatic, and I respect it. I like Illmatic better, but it was written is fire from top to bottom, man. The Minstrel Show by Little Brother. This album right here, this second album, I could not stop. I was like, yo, this album is incredible. Fonte's lyricism kills it every time. Ninth Wonders production. The skits, the skits were funny. That's how good this, the skits were funny. I was like, yo, cause a lot of people, the skits ain't really doing it. I'm like, man, get this skit out of here. But these skits you listen to, you don't even skip the skits. Percy Miracles, Fifth in Fashion. Oh man, don't get me started. The Minstrel Show is a phenomenal album, one of my favorites. Below the Heavens by Blue in Exile. This is a complete, this is probably the most underground album on this list. A lot of people don't even know what the hell this is but it's an amazing album. I just happened to see a review of it online somewhere and I, I ended up getting my hands on it. And we had just moved to Burbank from Orange and I was playing the hell out of this album. I could not stop. The way Blue was rhyming and Exile's production, I'm a, I'm a sucker for albums with one producer. I love that. When it's just one MC and one producer, I love that because you get a cohesive sound for the entire album, and this, oh, Blue and Exile, Blow the Heavens, crazy. Ready to Die, Biggie Smalls. Big surprise, this is on a lot of people's lists. Notorious B.I.G. is one of the most well-rounded rappers of all time. He could do anything, rap smooth, rap aggressive, he could storytell, he could be funny, he could be multiple characters in the rap, he can do it all. The only thing I didn't see him do was talking about like something that was super social or like, you know, like a political or social record. But he, you know, he was gone before his time. But everything else he did with ease. Ready to Die came out like a freight train. It was a slow burn for a lot of people. A lot of people had to get on it slowly. Juicy was popping. I'll never forget the first time I heard Juicy was in the River Oaks Mall in Chicago. And I was like, yo, what's this? Ready to Die was a powerhouse. It still holds up. Ready to Die is definitely on my list. Low End Theory by a Tribe Called Quest. I could have changed this out for Midnight Marauders because those two are twin sons, in my opinion. But I picked Low End Theory just because jazz and scenario. Scenario is one of the best posse tracks of all time. So I was like, yo, Low End Theory for that alone, it was like, it has to be on the list. It was incredible. And that's when Fife really came into his own on this album. So they were like a really a dope, Dynamic duo, man. This album is incredible. And I love the feeling I get when I listen to Tribe albums. Like, it really, it floods me with a lot of nostalgia and memories and, and just a whole vibe that I love every time I play them. Things Fall Apart by The Roots. This was the follow-up to Illadelph Half-Life, their third album. This album was amazing. Everybody was waiting on it. They had four different covers when it came out. They had the song You Got Me with uh, Erica Badu killing on the charts. So everybody was like, yo. Let's get this Roots going. It came out, it debuted well, it sold a lot, and I was like, yes, I love it when people I love are successful. And this album was crazy. I had just started going to uh, New Mexico State University, and I was just playing this everywhere I went on campus, man. And I couldn't stop. And I was, I was using it on my answer machine. Remember answer machines? I would have the music playing on the answer machine. This album is perfection. Supreme Clientele by Ghostface Killer. Now, his Iron Man album could have made my list as well. I love the Iron Man album, but Supreme Clientele kicked it up a notch. Uh, Supreme Clientele, when it hit the streets, I was like, I'm all in. Ghostface Killer then became my favorite Wu-Tang member because his discography was incredible at the time. Iron Man caught me by surprise because really, Ghostface, I really wasn't checking for him after end of the Wu-Tang 36 Chambers. I was like, yeah, Ghost is cool, but Raekwon, Method Man, those are the ones that are getting my attention. Inspect the deck. So Ghostface came out with Iron Man, I was like, yo, this dude. And then he doubled down on it with Supreme Clientele, blew my socks off, my teeth fell out, man. Supreme Clientele, 
One of my favorites. Southern Playalistic Cadillac Music by Outkast. The debut album from Outkast completely caught me off guard. I was like, Players Ball is dope. But I just thought, eh, Players Ball, that'd probably be all they have. This album, I was like, yo, man, my, my boy Mario had it. Put that Outkast on. Every time I got in his car, put that Outkast on. And then I got enough money to buy the tape myself. And I was like, put that outcast on tone. And I was like, yeah, I already knew. Because I was talking to myself. Southern Playlist Cadillac Music blew me away. One of the best albums of all time. Easy. And I love the fact that Outkast kept getting better and better with time. But this, this album right here for their debut, Masterpiece. Doggy Style by Snoop Dogg. Probably my favorite West Coast album of all time. Pure filth, content-wise. If y'all know me, y'all know I'm not about the bitches and hoes. That's not really my vernacular. But I know all the bitches and hoes and disrespect in this album word for word. I could not stop playing this album, man. I wore it out. I had it on cassette tape. I dubbed the tape. Tape broke. I got the CD, I was like, I need to have this in my life. I had the CD that had a song that he had to remove later on uh, called G's Up, Hose Down. I had that CD, Masterpiece. I feel like it was the Chronic only better. I feel like it was better than the Chronic. And we always had that debate. I feel like it was more polished than the Chronic. It's a masterpiece. Like Water for Chocolate by Common. I loved it. Jay Diller came in on the production strong. Quest Love was in there. James Poison was in there. He was changing his whole production team. He had a powerhouse on the production end of this album. He had DJ Premier for a track. And before, he was working with No ID, who's a legend in his own right. But then he switched it up and started working with the Soul Quarians, as they were known by then. D'Angelo was on the album. Erica, but man, listen, man. This album right here, I, I could you couldn't take it out of my dead hands. I was like, I can't stop listening to it. Masterpiece still holds up to this day. The Miseducation of Lauryn Hill. I know y'all gonna debate me on this because she was singing a lot. Make no mistake, Lauryn Hill is an MC. She's rapping on this album tough. Yeah, she's singing too. She's the Drake blueprint. But the Miseducation of Lauryn Hill is a perfect record. I could put this on my R&B list as well and it'd be perfectly fine. It's a perfect album. When we got it, when it hit when it hit New Mexico State University, I remember piling up in my Suzuki Swift two-door. We called it the egg. We piled in there. We went to uh, Hastings. I went in there. I was on a mission to get this Lauryn Hill album because I could not stop playing Wyclef's The Carnival album. Anything the Fugees were doing, I wanted in on. So Lauryn Hill dropped this. I was like, yes, let's go. Let's go. Because Prize, he failed with his, his solo. I, I just didn't like it at all. I was ready for the Lauryn. We were all ready for the Lauryn. So we go in there. We get it. Start playing it. Once I bought that album, I never took it out of the CD player for a whole semester. I listened to the song X Factor for a full school year. Every day, at least once a day, I listened to X Factor. One of the greatest albums ever made. End of the Wu-Tang, 36 Chambers, Wu-Tang Clan. This album, I got in the car with my friend Larone. He picked me up. They were playing The Mystery of Chess Boxing. I got in the car, ODB was rapping, Old Dirty Bastard. I was like, what the hell is this? And he was like, this is Wu-Tang Clan. What? Wu-Tang Clan. What? And then they had the, the karate movie snippets in there. I was like, what the hell is this? I was just like, and you know, I grew up watching karate movies with my older brother, so it was just like, my head exploded. I was like, yo, this is amazing. It was, it was, it was hip hop, it was rappers rapping, it was gritty. They sounded like cats I had never heard before. I was just like, I need this in my life. I need this in my life. I got, I got to have the tape. Please give me the tape. I'm like, nah, man, I just got it. Please. I was fiending, my lips was getting ashy. I was just like, please, just let me get the tape. I ended up buying the tape. I played it so much, the tape snapped in half. I ended up buying the CD. I could not stop. I was Wu-Tang McGee forevermore after that. Album blew me away. It was magic. Still one of my favorite albums to this day. And finally, Illmatic by Nas. That is my favorite hip hop album of all time. I remember the first time I heard of it, this girl named Dawn, who was a friend of my older brother. She had amazing legs. 
So she walked up and she was like, hey, yo, Tone. And she was from New York. Tone, you ever heard of Nasty Nuns? And I was like, I was looking at the legs. Nah, nah, I never heard of it. And she was like, yo, check him out. Like, yeah, anything you say. Anything you say. And I was just, you know, I was a kid. I was a teenager. Legs. Like, yeah, anything you say. She was planning. I was like, yeah, this is dope. But I really wasn't taking it in because the legs was the distraction. Cut to some time later. I'm watching the Rap City Top 10 Countdown. I see The World Is Yours by Nas on the countdown. I was like, yo, this song is dope. And Nas, I remember that this was the dude Dawn with, with the legs, though. This was the dude Dawn was talking about. I went back, listened to the album again. I was like, this album is amazing. I ripped my friend Lerone off. Lerone had the Illmatic CD. I had a cassette tape from Shaheem, the Rugged Child. I, was, I just bought it, it was brand new. I was like, yo, let's trade. I'm gonna let you hold Shaheem, let me hold that Nas Illmatic. I never gave him back the Illmatic. I still got it to this day. Lerone, if you're watching this, I'm sorry, bro. Let me buy you another Illmatic, because I never gave it back. That's how strong this album was. I was like, Lerone ain't getting it back. And I was willing to risk the friendship for that. That's my top 25 favorite hip hop albums of all time. Let me know yours in the comments section below. Get over me not having Tupac in here. His album didn't make the cut. No Eminem albums made it either. Y'all just gonna have to deal with it, all right? I said what I said, my list is my list. And you can do your own list, you know what I'm saying? Let me know in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and as usual, we out here. Also, let me know what other lists you want me to do in the future. I'll cook them up for you, man. Let me know in the comments section below.